Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Moore, every t as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, there's a bunch of gobbledygook going on, so we can... We can <laughs> gobbledygook, go though, it. with volatility, so, no doubt, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, volatility. It came out, I guess, uh, GDP grew 2% or something today. And well, anyhow, let's it's, it's, uh, it's, it's try to figure out what's going on. Let's, let's take a look at chart one. Okay, I have it up. All right, the, the top window is a 10-day trend. And uh, when it gets down around 0.9 or lower, which is all that shaded area, pink shaded area across. Let's see that. Yeah, across uh, that chart, and now goes this chart goes back a couple, three years, whatever. And we pretty much reached that point nine, pretty close to the top. And it was kind of a, a concerning time. You know, it, it works fairly well, but anyhow, that was kind of a bearish sign. It's kind of what. I had several different indicators that were kind of leaning bearish. I did get out of the market on the July 12th, and I'm, I'm remaining out of the market. And the reason why I'm going to stay out of the market is, is on page or at chart two. Okay. And our chart two is kind of the same thing. The, the top chart is a 10 day trend. And again, at point nine or lower, you're normally some sort of a close to a, some sort of a high, but in reverse, when it's a 10-day trends up around 1.2 or higher, normally you're at a, a low. And all the pink-shaded areas are times when the trend, 10-day trend, was up around 1.2 or higher. And it, these uh, trends, 10-day trends can actually, even during a rally, can be, be above 1.2. That kind of adds energy to the rally. But anyhow, right now we're at 0.99. And for especially we're in kind of a, a summer doldrums, I guess you might say. And even though we're probably near a short-term low here, this is not going to be a worthwhile low. The reason why, because the 10-day trend is not even near 1.2. I see. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. And, and if you look at the 21-day the trend, which is... Um, I see that, yeah. The sec yeah, the second window up from the bottom, you like to have that up around 1.2 also. And neither one of them are. So I think... To get those trends, the 21-day trend, and or the 10-day trend, preferably the 21-day trend, to get up around 1.2 or higher is for the market to kind of go, uh, to actually decline. You know, you, sometimes you build it in a trading range, the trend will go up. Sometimes the market just has to decline to get the trend to go up. But the market needs more work here, I guess. Uh, either building a sideways trading range or just declining to get that trend up around the 10 day trend up to around 1.2. So I don't, I don't think other than, uh, short term, you're not looking for any worthwhile bottom here. It's just not really set up for it. And if, if we can go and kind of look a little bit further here on chart three. Yes, I have it. Okay. Beautiful. I have it. Yeah. Okay. It's, Probably going too fast here, but no, no, no. This uh, is good. This is everyone wants to learn and know about that because no doubt in in that trading room, the whole ball of wax. You know, they understand these trend numbers, and you know, they 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 they're consistent, man. Which is really cool. What's really cool right. is that you just brought us up to date. You know, on the longer term trend, and that that's you know, at, it looks to me like at this point, that's important to really understand. Yeah, that's this. This is kind of important. You know, I don't know when this trend. The ten-day trend is going to get up around one point two, but when it does, this chart is going to have relevance. Yes, and uh, uh, you know, higher the better. You know, one point four is better than one point two. That kind of adds to the urgency that yeah, you're, you're it's time to get into the market. So, but you know, probably sometime I don't know. It could be August, July, September, October, or. Not July. July is almost over. It's probably not going to happen because July ends next, what, Wednesday or something. But anyhow, somewhere in August, September, October, that 10-day trend, and probably since we're probably looking at a, a sideways doldrums for this summer for the next several weeks, if not the couple next couple of months, but sometime probably in September, October, that 10-day trend, 21-day trend will be up around 1.2 or higher. And we'll be talking about it on your show. Saying, yes. You know, 
this is not the time to be bearish because when that trend does get up there, that's people showing that they're on the sell side of the market because to get to get the trend up to around 1.2, you need more down volume than up volume, and you need more uh, advanced or more declining stocks than up stocks. That's the reason why to push that trend up to around 1.2 because the definition of the trend is the uh, advancing issue over declining issues, and that's over up volume divided by down volume. Yes. So, so to get all of that you know, up to 1.2, you got a lot of people pushing uh, volume on the downside on the down stocks. So, and that's that's where bottoms come from. So, stay right there, um, Tim. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 332. Nasdaq is up 45. S and P's are up 16 and a half. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim O'Brien. Yeah, Tim O'Brien. I like it, Tim. Hey, let's let's do that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tim O'Brien. Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Just don't call me Sue. I love it, man. So we're, we're looking at the chart with the uh, number three, chart number three, Tim. Yeah, okay, this is a short term. Uh, this is the SPY. I use SPY because the volume characteristics work a lot better than the SPX. But anyhow, yesterday... The volume really jumped up about 100% higher than compared to the last couple of days. A lot of times that's kind of an exhaust move to the downside. It just, you know, everybody's heading for the exit too quick and usually stops the decline. And now today, and also I want to point out, yesterday was down over 2%. I think it was 2.27%. Yes. 2% declines come in clusters. If you ever go back and look at a, a, a declining day that had 2% or more, that's usually only one of at least another one coming. I see. Uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all probabilities, you know, how, I forgot what the probability was, but, but it's like the high 80s or low 90s. So once you get one, you're going to see another one probably within the next week or so. But anyhow, besides that, uh, we did have kind of an exhaust move down to the downside because of volume. Today we're going to test yesterday's low, and most likely volume is going to be lighter than yesterday's low, so that's going to be support. And if you notice, the trend pretty much all day today has been pretty high. You got 1.64, we've been high as 2.25 today. Uh, so you got a trend, at least on a daily, you got one trend, and we're in the trend area, the, the light blue area across that Yeah, chart. and I see that, right. The, the, yeah, those are the times when the trend was uh, uh, actually 1.19 or higher, you know, 1.2 ideally, but, you know, it's, it's probability 1.19 is high enough. But, you know, that, that area looks like about 530 to 540 had quite a bit of panic in it. And the reason why yesterday we didn't have a trend reading high at all is 0.68, I think. But today it's been always above 1.2 almost all day, it's like, you know, again, we're on 0.64 right now. Yes. So we're probably at a short-term low. We can't take out yesterday's low because we need to take out yesterday's low on higher volume. Volume's going to be lighter. Uh, so we can't take out the previous low. We're going to try to take out the previous high. Well, previous high is yesterday's high, So, which is where a gap formed. So, And then you know what happened you, today too, Tim, which is intriguing with the SPY. So the gap, the, the 537.02.01, is a gap that's left over from June 11th. And we actually went to 537.45. That's a gap in the spy. So that's pretty okay. intriguing too. Yeah. So we're talking about yesterday's gap? No, gap that we're, what we're going into, the, the, the gap, there was a gap that was on the way up on June 11th. And the, the top oh, June of, 11th, oh yeah, way back there, right? Yeah, okay, so the top of that gap is 537.01. We hit 537.45 today, you know? Okay, I, yeah, I didn't even notice that. I, uh, yeah, that's, I should have, anyhow, yeah, we, you, good point. So, uh, did you test that gap on lighter volume? No, it's heavier. It like, uh, it's heavier. I was, all right, we're going to come back down. It was only so 30, anyhow. the gap was 36 million and we've done 43. So far today. Okay, so yeah. we're probably going to test it. You know, so that's kind of my theory. So we we're probably going to bounce here. And the first area of resistance is a gap. So if you go into a gap and you test it on at least 10% or 
or greater lighter volume, that gap's going to hold its resistance. So my opinion, there's no upside here. Plus, we had a 2% down day yesterday. 2% down days come in clusters. Yeah, that stat so is something else. I know. It's... Yeah, so it, this this is if if you're day trading, yeah, you could probably make a few points here, but you know, it's, you know how bottoms are. You know, oh, yeah. scare the crap out of you. you no, know, no, we haven't sure. reached that stage yet, so right, um, we're, we're going to get slapped in the face a few more times, and we may just do that in the sideways trading range because I don't think anything meaningful of a top. I don't think we're heading into a ten percent decline here. I think at most we'll probably stay around this blue area, try to rally out of it. The rally fails. We come back into it. Yeah, because the, the, I think this, the, the blue area go also ahead. goes down to, what, 420 on the, uh, it looks to me, 422. I think you have it nailed on there. One second. Yeah, 422. Five. The bottom of that's 422, right? That blue area? Uh, uh, so I'm a little colorblind. Well, I got a blue no, five, area. The blue five, area. Uh, no, sorry, man. Five, 522, not 422. 522 in that blue area. It looks like you have the you have yeah. it from five forty two to five twenty two, yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's about five thirty two. Okay, thirty two. I better get another <laughs> pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, your glasses as good as mine. Yeah, exactly. I got it. I got what we call it uh, a magnifying glass. So I can see it. <laughs> uh, trust me, man. I know. It was I like know. twenty years ago, we could see things. Tom. We could, Tim. <laughs> 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 oh so, man! Unreal. But anyhow, yeah, it's five thirty-two, and you know, up to around five forty-two. Okay, I think that's where all the the, the action is going to occur. We're going to try to rally out of it, and plus, you know, these gaps are not going to be open forever. You know, right. you go up and test right. them, and can't get through them. You come back down. But anyhow, my my scenario is is a blue arrow. Is a blue? Yes. I have a blue arrows in there, so I think we go up to the gap. The gap finds resistance. We come back down, you know, because of the two percent cluster thing. We come back down, probably get some panic in that five thirty two area. Yes, and uh, from there, I don't know. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a bunch of gobbly goops, like I said. So no, I, I listen. I can uh, see that laying out, particularly Tim, because what had happened is that because we haven't got a downdraft for so long, it was fast and furious, right? Let's say it goes, you know, sideways for a couple of days. On the next one down, I can see the fear being bigger. You know what I'm saying? Because of the first one. And we might yeah. not go down as much. We might make a bottom that day. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like one of those deals that we know that, yeah, first time they're scared, but not that scared. The second time, though, it's like, okay, hold it, man. You know, what's happening here? And you know, I can see that thing laid out, particularly because of where we're laid up uh, in the calendar also, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll do what it needs to do and stuff. And, right. you know, the hardest trades are to make are usually the most profitable. Oh, yeah. You know, they always say, well, right, well you're you going out and catch a knife. Well, there's enough information if you understand how the panic works in a market. Yeah. Because if you buy panic, you only going to have to suffer a very short period of time. That's right. If you wait after the rally, they don't let you in because usually – once you have panic, you have a sign of strength if you do have a bottom in the market. Yes. We talked about that on the call in the oscillator. Well, the sign of strength is, you know, the smart money's buying, and, and there's no pullback after a sign of strength, you know, 90% right. of the time. So right. you really have to buy in the panic time and, frames and, to, and, uh, to do. No, that's right. And what happens, folks, okay, remember this program is archived, so you can go over these trend numbers with Tim. This is... You want to do this, folks. If you're in the car, remember. And what we also do, folks, is that we take this segment, you know, and put this segment itself on YouTube every day. So check it out, man. It's really important. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim and Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate the growl on a problem with us. Dow's up uh, 250. NASDAQ's down 26. S&Ps are off one. And Tim, um, on that gap, right? And thanks, Stan, for giving me a heads up there. That it is more volume than I told you. I, I was doing the day before, so it's the gap is 63 million, and right now we've only done 45. This is the gap from the 11th to the 12th of August, or I mean, just uh, June. I just yeah, I see that. Yeah, because it, yeah, it gapped up. It was tested, uh, you know, the next day. Then it, then it kind of just the gap was tested on lighter volume that next day. So it'd be what the 12th. And the market finally went up. So now we went and tested the gap again. 
Yeah. And uh, so there's a little bit of support there. Yeah, there is. The no, more we'll, times, we'll, right. Yeah, the more times the gap is tested, the less resistance or support that gap has. Yes. That's what kind of found out. So right. No, it's, it's just like... There's enough evidence that we're probably going to bounce here into the gap that was formed yesterday to the downside. And if we test that gap on higher volume, which is kind of unlikely because yesterday's volume was huge. It was huge. So I don't think we're going to get through yesterday's gap. Right. But, right. Yeah, we'll see. Cool. So, but anyhow. Okay, so. Yeah, it's kind of gobb- gobbledygook. So I'll go to the next shot. I'm on four now, okay? Yeah, four. It's a momentum chart. And uh, the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume. We've seen this chart before. And uh, this is updated to today. I don't think the rally is over yet. Things things may change, but this is a two two and a half month moving average of the up down volume, and it's still above zero. As long as the hold is above zero, the uptrend's intact. And so all that, I guess, the shaded green area across the charts at times when that chart was the bottom window was above zero. So, so far we're above zero and we're going to, so let's look at the shorter term picture, which is on chart five. Okay. And this is a 50 day, 15 day average. So it's just three weeks of uh, trading says two and a half months is three weeks. So it responds a lot faster. So it, it caught the bottom back in March and kind of still staying along. Uh, this chart at the bottom window is the 15-day average up-down volume, and it has to, this chart has to stay above minus 10 for the momentum to stay up, and so far it is, it's like minus 1. And next higher window is the advanced decline 15-day average, and S2 has to stay above minus 10, and it's like minus 5 right now. So it's showing a little bit of weakness, but so far, it's still in an uptrend. So uh, what I want to look at is chart 6. Okay. And so I'm, I'm, this chart is, what I'm looking for is divergence. So the bottom window is, a, uh, is this a weekly or is this a daily? Yeah, it's a daily. Uh, it's a daily chart of the uh, up, or advanced decline is the bottom window, but it's a cumulative advanced decline. And the top window is a cumulative up-down volume. So it's kind of similar indicators, but they're cumulative. They're not advancing or they're not moving averages they're cumulative yes so this chart works pretty well in showing divergences if you look go look back at uh, uh the first green area which is basically mid 2022 the middle chart is gdx and the, if you notice i drew some lines on gdx and gdx was making lower lows and lower highs well both these charts were making higher highs uh, so that was kind of a bull, do, bullish divergence going into the October of 2022. Market went up, and in in uh, the April May of 2023, both those charts were making lower highs as the GDX was making higher highs. And that was a bearish divergence, and kind of the same thing happened in uh, November December of 2023. Well, later that year, the GDX made higher highs. Both those two indicators made lower highs. And right now, we're still making higher highs on both those charts as GDX is making higher highs. But if GDX goes up, yeah, say we do turn around and make up a higher high again in GDX, and those two indicators make lower highs, I think on a short-term basis, you know, you're probably going to have a, a, a consolidation phase. And so far, it hasn't happened. The only reason why I think GDX will make a higher high here, uh, there's a short-term seasonality period for gold that turns bullish on July 24th and runs to uh, August 3rd. And this is, goes back 40 years. So there's a high probability chance that gold's probably going to take a rally here, or even though the gold's down today, it's probably going to start taking a rally here that may last about a week or two, at least a week. And if gold, if GDX responds, makes a higher high, uh, and those two indicators make lower high, then you may get a uh, a consolidation along with you know the whole you know the equity market too. So I don't see what's you know even if you stay long here. I got the monthly chart got bullish back on May thirty first. We sold that chart. We showed that chart on your show you know several different times. Yes. And so there even there'll be a, a consolidation. Eventually, we are going to keep making higher highs. 
throughout this year, probably throughout all next year too, and the year after. I don't know, but uh, and they're, they're uh, making it I'm, tough. <laughs> they're making it. T- it's never easy, folks. That's the bottom line. Is that the? Yeah, yeah. it's never easy. But you know, if, uh, the monthly charts are bullish. Yes. They're going to keep going up. But uh, the weekly, uh, this is a daily chart. So what the pattern could be forming here is three drives to a top pattern, where you had a top in. That would be as he uh, May April. June, there's a June top, a July top, and now we're at another higher July top. So you have three higher tops, but that second top off the second top did a re- deep retracement against the first rally up. Yes. That's how you, that's how you kind of define what three drives a top pattern is. And all it is, it's not a long-term topping pattern. <laughs> it's basically what I call a timeout and an uptrend. Okay. But you go back down to where the first top began, which is basically where that neckline lies. So, which is around 32. So, if you go back to 32, so uh, it could be, you know, if you're trading market, um, that's a possibility that may develop. But uh, I think over the next week or so, I think the market's going to rally, even though G is down today. I don't think this is a final high. I think at minimum, you'll get in the, the, probably the low 40s or something, or, you know, at least test the previous high. So, we'll see how that develops. But, uh, bigger trends up, short-term trends getting a little mushy. So, well, listen, I don't know what we say about it. appreciate it. The update, the trends, the GDX, the ratios that you set up in a monster way, no doubt. And you know, needless to say, uh, we get some volatility, and we'll see exactly yeah. how this shakes out in the next, uh, you know, four to six weeks, no doubt, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be messy. So. That's how I'm reading it. No, now. I can so see it. it. it, it is, but, sum, you know, summers it's going to begin probably later this, you know, maybe September, I think, September, October. And it'll be one of those, you know, nail-biting type things, and which which I kind of like anymore because I, I kind of know what to expect. No, so I agree. You, you I agree. Listen, man, I... Yep. And they're a lot of fun because you make a lot of money quickly, but, boy, they're, they're, uh, they're really hard on... On your system, <laughs> they're, they're, na- they're nail biters until they're that. not. <laughs> and right now, I don't have any nails. I clipped them today. <laughs> them. Right. So. Oh man! Listen, man, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you Tuesday, Tim. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, Thank man. You. Don't forget, folks. Okay, the, what we do every day, uh, well, every Tuesday, Thursday, this whole segment goes on YouTube. Also, check it out. It's a you know. Great ratios. Come right back, folks.